All right, so there's guys out there who don't focus on the basics when it comes to preparing for technical interviews. They constantly jump from resource to resource, trying to find like the best resource to prepare for the interviews. Of course, they don't find it because it doesn't exist and they don't get anywhere. Whereas there's other guys out there who focus on the basics. They work hard and they ace interviews in no time. I'm going to talk about the difference here specifically. I'll give the best advice that I can give on how to ace technical interviews. I've passed a lot of interviews at this time, failed, uh, failed a lot of interviews at this point. So I really hope this video will help you out. Without further ado, let's dive into it. I remember clearly, I had my laptop open and I'm just signing into an interview with a big tech company. This is my very first interview at a big tech company. So I signed into that interview and the interviewer is already there waiting for me. And then he tells me, okay, we're gonna be using CoderPad, which is just like this uh, little website where you can enter code for, basically I'd be entering the solution, uh, code solution I'd be writing into CoderPad. So I say, okay. And then he tells me the problem. And I don't understand a word of it. I'm like, what the, f you know, I don't understand a word of the problem. And this is a one hour interview, so 30 minutes pass. And after 30 minutes pass, I'm nowhere near, uh, you know, getting the solution. So for the next 30 minutes, we jump into uh, some Q&A and they ask me some technical questions and such things. And the interview ends. I close my laptop. I walk out of the room and I go to my living room. My mother's sitting there. And I tell her, no way I passed that interview. I don't think I'm getting a call back. Two days pass and I'm on my phone. I open my Gmail and I have an email telling me that I'm being moved forward in the process, right? This leads me to the first point, which is don't underestimate the behavioral aspect of the interview. Because once I got into the company, I did accept their offer. Once I got into the company, I asked that interviewer, hey, why did you move forward in the process? I bombed that interview. And they told me that the reason they moved me forward is because I seem genuine, I ask great questions, they had a good feeling, and they moved me forward, right? Now, part of the issue here is these people will say, oh, it's all about lead code, bro. If you can't do lead code hard, uh, you suck, bro. There's no way you're going to pass the interview, bro. Like, no, take that thought throughout the window. We don't listen to those people. These people put a train of thought on us that doesn't serve us whatsoever. Look, of course, it's ideal that, you know, you ace the question and your behavioral uh, is on point. That's like the ideal situation, right? But I can tell you, if your, technical, if your technical skills are here, but your behavioral skills are here, you're not going to move forward in the process. Someone with great technical skills and little to no behavioral skills is a net negative to the team, right? So behavioral skills are very important in this career. And even if your technical skills, you know, you weren't able to perform your best on that day at the interview, your behavioral skills can pick up a fair amount of slack there. So don't underestimate the behavioral aspect. Now, the best advice that I have in this instance is firstly, just basic human etiquette, you know, smile, show genuine interest in the company, uh, be a nice person. And after that, the best advice I have for behavioral interviews is the STAR principle, situation, task, action, result. I'm going to go over this principle very briefly, and I'll leave a resource in the description that goes way into it. So let's say the interviewer asks you, hey, tell me about a time where you took a risk on a project and tell me how that played out. So you can say, okay, the situation was, I was doing this project where we were getting close to the deadline, but we knew if we added this one feature, it would have greatly enhanced the customer experience. The task was that I was the lead engineer on that project and I made the decision, okay, let's call the shot and let's go ahead and create this feature. So the action I took was I created that feature. The result was we ended up missing the deadline, but the product that was delivered was way more satisfactory for the customer, right? So what the STAR principle allows us to do is really a great way to just gather our thoughts, right, is what it really is. So sometimes when an interviewer asks us a behavioral question, this, I've done this multiple times, made this mistake multiple times. They'll ask us a behavioral question and we'll be like, oh yeah, this happened and this happened, oh, and then there was this and then that person came and we just ramble. And we miss the bulk of what the interviewer is looking for. The STAR principle is a great way to keep our th thoughts organized and give the interviewer the main content that they're looking for, right? Now, next thing I remember is I did another interview. So I got my laptop open and this is a Zoom call with one person shadowing and another person asking me interview questions. And we're going over a coding problem. So they asked me this coding problem. It's a one hour interview. And I'm typing away, typing away, typing away, explaining my thought process as I type away. 50 minutes pass. And I've only maybe got like half of the problem, 50% of the problem. And now we're in the last 10 minutes of the interview and the interviewer tells me, hey, you could keep coding throughout the last 10 minutes. Uh, you know, if you'd like to use the full time, see if you can solve it. And I tell them, look, for the last 20 to 30 minutes, 
I've made little to no progress on this. So realistically, I don't think I'm going to be able to solve it. Let's move on to the next part. And then we moved on to the next part, which is just like a little Q&A. Close my laptop. Again, I walk out of my room and I have the same feeling. I'm like, there's no way I passed that interview. No way. A few days pass. I get an email telling me I'm moving forward in the process, right? Now, the second point I want to make here, the first point I touched on behavioral, that's like being a you know genuine person, showing interest, etc. But the next point is we have to communicate our thought process as well. That's also a big aspect of the communication, right? Because I did actually ask them, hey, I thought I bombed the interview. Why did you move me forward in the process? And they said that even though I didn't perform well on the technical problem, I was able to explain my train of thought really well and I was communicating throughout the problem. That's why they moved me forward. Right. So if you're just like sitting, say interview asks you a question, and you're sitting like typing away and it's like quiet and awkward, and you're not explaining anything, you're not going to move forward in the process. Right. The interviewer is looking for if basically what they're looking for is when you see a problem, what's your train of thought? How do you approach the problem? Right. If you're just typing away, typing away, even if in your mind you calculated it all and uh, you know you figured it all out yourself, what it may look like and what it probably will look like. As you've seen this problem before, you've memorized the solution and you're just typing away. So you don't actually have any problem solving skills. So they want to see your problem solving skills. They want to see how you think, right? Now, part of the issue here is, again, these people say, oh, you got to have the perfect solution, bro. If you can't solve a lead code medium in 20 minutes, that's pathetic, bro. Like, no, take that thought throughout the window. We don't listen to those people. Again, they put a train of thought on us that doesn't serve us whatsoever. The ideal situation, of course, is, you know, you ace the technical aspect and you're communicating well, of course. But life doesn't always play out in optimal ways, right? So if the technical aspect, you know, maybe you're over here, you're not solving quite well. If you're communicating, you're explaining, hey, this is what I think, this is what's going on, etc. You still have a chance to move forward. And again, if your technical aspect is even over here, you ace the problem, but you're not communicating, you're not explaining, your chances of moving forward are slim to none. Now, the best advice I can give on this instance is the book, How to Solve It by George Polya. Right. I've read, I've read this book, not all of it. Realistically, all you need is like the first 10 pages of the book. It's a decently big book, right? It's 20 to $30 on Amazon. So you can buy it if you want to support the author. But again, not even 10 pages, you really only need like two pages out of the book. And I'm going to link the book and the pages in the description. Now, George Polio was like a legendary mathematician, right? And he wrote this book on how to approach problem solving from a mathematical aspect, but a whole lot of it carries over to programmatic problem solving. So here, just to give an example, I don't remember all the steps. Again, I will link them in the description, but when I'm doing a programming problem, the steps I'll go over are the unknown, the data, and the condition, right? And this is all, again, outlined in the in the problem solving process by Polio. So firstly, I'll be like, okay, unknown. What's the unknown here? What's the question asking? Then I'll go over the data. Okay, this is the data. In the case of programming, usually there's data coming in and there's data you have to return. So what data am I expected to take in? What data am I expected to return? And then the condition, okay, are there any conditions? Are there any constraints I need to look out for? Edge cases, right? So these are some things, uh, again, I got these from the book and I will literally just go over that uh, that process step by step up. You know, say this is an interview, I'll be like, oh, these are the unknowns. Oh, what's the data that's coming? Oh, this is the data that's coming in. This is what I need to return. Oh, it's a string. And I'll talk out loud like that. And it does two things. A, it helps me to gather my thoughts. Of course, an interview is a bit of a, uh, you know, a nerve wracking experience. There's people like looking at you while, while you got to code. So this process helps me to collect my thoughts. And it also gives me point on the communication aspect um, because the interviewer can now see what my problem solving process is like. Right. All right. Next thing I remember is this was during my CS degree days. I got my laptop open and I'm watching a playlist. And it's a data structures and algorithms playlist, right? It's talking about like arrays, linked lists, uh, uh, graphs, trees, right? I'm watching this. And I don't understand a word. I'm like, what the fuck is this, right? I want to throw my laptop across the room, right? And the point I'm making here is, look, I'll talk about this a little bit later, but my background is not like I'm some math whiz or something like this. I've, I've had a horrific academic track record, right? But I'm still in this career. And despite struggling majorly throughout my computer science degree, not feeling smart enough many times, not feeling smart enough to be in this field many times, I still have a successful career in the field, right? 
And when it comes to data structures and algorithms, you have to know it. It's a non-negotiable. Data structures and algorithms is the foundation of like 99.9% .9 of programming interviews, right? So data structures and algorithm knowledge is a non-negotiable. Now, as far as the best advice I have on this instance, I mainly learn to like scattered resources on YouTube. So there's not really one specific resource I'd recommend on YouTube, but to get better at programming interviews specifically, grokking the coding interview helped me a lot. That is a paid resource, right? But again, I would never recommend a paid resource unless I genuinely believed in it and, uh, you know, I've used it. So I have used it. I believe it's a solid resource. Um, so that's uh, one I'd recommend. And another one is Structi. Structi is made by Alvin. Alvin used to be a bootcamp instructor and now he's uh, made the Structi platform. And if you Google Alvin's name, right, you'll find references upon references upon references of all his bootcamp students uh, who stand by how good of an instructor he is. And I stand by the fact that Structi is a great resource. But I think if you get a foundation of knowledge uh, of data structures and algorithm, either to YouTube, reading a book, however, and then from there you take either the Grokking course or the Structi course, you'll be in a great place to start. At the very least, you'll be in a great place to finally start understanding some of the lead code problems, right? Because lead code initially is very intimidating. So you'll be at a great place to start um, understanding some of the initial lead code problems. And I think, frankly, you'll be in a great place to pass a lot of coding interviews. I've never done like a FANG interview, so I can't say for that. Though I have passed the initial screen for Amazon. And the initial screen that I passed for Amazon after that, they went into um, a hiring freeze. So the initial screen that I passed for Amazon, I was able to pass that from the knowledge I've gotten from grokking. And then of course, practicing on lead code uh, by myself as well. So again, grokking or structy after you have that foundation of data structures and algorithms will help you out loads. Structy even actually goes over that foundation. So you don't even need to go on YouTube to search for that foundation. You can just hop on the structy platform. And if you have basic programming chops, go on that platform. Go through all of it. Go through it like Alvin explains to go through it. And I'm confident you'll be in a great place to start acing coding interviews. Now, if Structy doesn't resonate with you or Grokking doesn't resonate with you or you're at a point right now where you can't afford these resources, I'll leave Need Code in the description. Need Code has a website uh, where it goes over common um, uh, you know, interview, interview uh, problems along with explanations. That is also a great resource. So get your foundation of knowledge, uh, DSNA knowledge from YouTube and then start hacking away at the need code questions list. And even then you'll be at a great place to start uh, killing these uh, technical interviews. And um, yeah, that's all I got for this video. I just want to end this video off by saying, hey, be kind to yourself throughout this process. This is not an easy process whatsoever, right? I remember I started this journey in December of 2019. I was just coming off finishing my crim degree. And I, I realized I didn't want to be a police officer. So I was like, okay, what am I going to do? So then computer science looked intriguing. I went into computer science. And December 2019 is also when I enrolled in my computer science uh, program. And when I enrolled in that program, previous to that, again, I had a horrific academic track record. I failed multiple high school courses, didn't graduate high school on time. I failed a college course, was an average college student at best. Right? Those throughout my time of going through my computer science degree, there were all these thoughts running around in my mind. Am I smart enough to do this? Will I even be able to do this? You know, it's computer science, software engineering is like this smart people field. Am I cut out for this? And again, like the example I gave with the data structures and algorithms, there was many times where I just wanted to like throw my book across the room because I didn't understand a word. I remember reading my a Java book, my intro to programming for my intro to a programming course. I'm reading this book and it's telling me about like objects and stuff. I'm like, what the, what the fuck is an object, you know? And I, I remember so clearly how much I struggled with all this. Right. And even once I got into the industry, well, am I smart enough to do this? Am I going to get fired? Uh, uh, you know, how, how am I doing? And the imposter syndrome was my daily friend, you know, throughout this industry. And now I'm in a much better place where I feel I have the skills. Of course, I've been in this industry two plus years. So if I really sucked, I would have been uh, let go long ago. So now I feel a lot more confident in my skills. But I understand what that's like. I understand what it's like to feel, uh, you know, not really be able to absorb these concepts and not feel smart enough and be like, oh, this is like a field for like math wizards or something like this, right? I understand what the struggle is like. I also want to understand what it's like to be in the struggle, so to speak, and not see any tangible results. Like I signed up for my computer science degree in December of 2019 and I got my six-figure job offer August of 2021. 
But all throughout that mid period, the most I'd made was like a little above minimum wage. So then it's like, oh, no results, no results, no results. Oh, a little above minimum wage, oh, no results, no results. Six figure job offer. Right. So this whole time, I was just showing up daily, grinding daily, hoping it would work out, but with no guarantee that it would work out. And that's a difficult place to be in. So again, be kind to yourself throughout this process. Be proud of yourself every single day for showing up. Because a lot of people will start this journey. Not a lot of people will see it through the end, right? And I believe in you. I'm confident that you can make it in the industry. But what I believe doesn't matter. What you believe matters. So I hope you believe in yourself too. Now I just want you to imagine for a second. Imagine you take this advice. You run with it. And your money is growing day by day by day. Now you've got enough money to support your family, right? To go out and have fun, go out on dates, go out with friends, buy a new car, travel, right? Because I had like an 07 Toyota Corolla when I would drive it like uh, over 80 kilometers an hour, it starts shaking, you know? And now I've been able to buy a new car. And I'm able to like go out on dates and spend money there and do these things before I had to borrow that money from my parents, right? Maybe you want to move out. So imagine again, you've worked hard in the industry, you've put in the effort, and now you've got the money you need to move out. Right. But most importantly, you've now got now got coding, which is this high paying skill. Again, you've grinded at it. You have the skill for life now that you can fall back on. Right. Imagine that. That's the path you're on. Again, keep working hard. I believe in you. But what I believe doesn't matter. What you believe matters. So I hope you believe in yourself, too. And that's all I got for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Ultimately, I want this to be our positive little community where we help each other, support each other and help each other get to the next level in life. So please come join the community. I'll leave my Instagram, TikTok in the description, also somewhere here. Please do support there as well. Please do like, comment, subscribe. I'll talk to you later. Peace.